Today we're going to start talking about non-genetic population changes. So why do we care about the non-genetic portion of population changes? Well, here is two graphs actually that describe human population growth uh, over the last 6,000 years and over the last 300 years about. And these two graphs actually link together because the human population has hockey sticked so hard that you cannot actually read the graph properly at either scale. You need to take a look at them at both. So human population, we will come circle back to uh, next week a bit, but it has changed dramatically since the 14th century. And the consequences of those changes on our planet are very salient. So just as humans, we need to understand what the heck is going on to our own species. But also, this is extremely important information for monitoring other species and learning about them and then applying that information to ourselves. So population size, we already talked about earlier, it is measured by the variable n. And n in this case is literally short for number. Um, <laughs> we run out of letters very easily in the sciences. So n is the population size, and then we can measure population density based off of an area or a volume. So there's actually two ways of measuring it. You can measure uh, population density as the population size over the area it occupies. Oftentimes we'll talk about that in uh, kilometers squared, miles squared, hectares, but we could also talk about it in terms of meters or feet even. Depends on the species. We can also measure population density in terms of population size over the volume it occupies. And you can probably figure out right now that we use that one for aquatic species often and we use the area more for terrestrial species.